If we talk about urban legends, Bigfoot is just one of those creatures that can't be left out. The hairy Sasquatch was said to terrorize remote forests for years, but as time goes by, the story of Bigfoot has changed into many different forms and iterations, and today, we're going to talk about all of them. At our number 10 spot, we have the Skunk Ape. Known as Florida's own Bigfoot, the infamous skunk ape is said to inhabit their forests and swamps. The skunk ape is described as being bipedal, 5 to 7 feet tall with reddish brown hair all around its body. Sightings of this creature started all the way back in 1818 when local Florida newspapers spoke of a quote man-sized monkey. This creature was sabotaging food stores and following fishermen along the shorelines. Then in 1942, another man reported a similar creature that was running at his vehicle while he was driving on an isolated road. He claimed the creature attacked his car for a little bit before returning back into the woods. And even on July 8, 2000, a YouTuber posted daytime footage of this creature. But you guys can be the judge from the footage. At a number 9 spot, we have Almas of Mongolia. Hidden away in the Altai Mountains of Western Mongolia is a creature known as the Almas. They are also considered the wild men of Mongolia, but they're not your typical humans. Although they're around 5 to 6 feet tall, they weigh as much as 600 pounds, and they're covered in complete thick fur that covers all their skin. Those who have seen this creature up front have mentioned that it has the face of a Neanderthal, since it has a large forehead ridge and a really flat wide nose. The sightings of this creature date back to the 1400s when a Bavarian prisoner claimed to see two of these Almas being presented as gifts to the Khan regime. Then in 1871, Russian explorer Nikolai Prishevelsky spotted one, claiming it to be a man beast covered in thick black fur with enormous claws. Search parties have gone out to find if this creature really inhabited the mountains of Mongolia, but nothing significant has been found. However, some scientists believe it could be a relic population of Neanderthals who have been up in the mountains ever since, but who really knows other than the people who actually live in Mongolia. At number 8 spot, we have Barmanu of Pakistan. In northern Pakistan, shepherds living in the mountains have spoken about a creature that possesses both human and ape-like characteristics, giving it the title, the Bigfoot of Pakistan. The Barmanu, which translates to big creature, is a bipedal primate that is known to abduct women and attempt to mate with them. Those who have encountered one have told about its horrifying screams, and they claim it sounds like a woman screamed if she was in extreme agony. Then in 1987, a Spanish scientist named Jordi McGraner arrived in Pakistan in search of this beast. And after a 19 month study, he was convinced that the beast was indeed out there, despite not getting any sort of solid evidence. I really don't know how that works. This led him to a 15 year search for the creature, but in the summer of 2002, he was found dead with a slit throat near the area. The case ended up going cold and the mystery of this creature has prolonged ever since. At a number 7 spot, we have the Alba Twitch. In the forest of Columbia, Pennsylvania is a four foot tall hairy creature known as the Alba Twitch. Their name is just short for Apple Snitch since they are known to be snatching apples left and right. People who walk near along the Susquehanna River claim to have these small creatures violently throw apples at them to push them away from their homes. Their homes are said to be in the treetops where they would only come down to gather apples. These hairy humanoids are often mistaken as Bigfoot children since they are also reported around the area as well. And the sightings of these guys date all the way back to Native American mythology, where they used to depict these ape-like creatures on these war shields for protection. Despite the fact that these creatures are not likely to cause death, getting apples thrown at you aggressively doesn't sound too appealing either. At number 6 spot, we have the Chatoa Monster. This is basically Mississippi's Bigfoot. So according to Pike County legend, a circus train was going through the old Illinois Central Railroad and in a sudden twist of events, it derailed in the swamps near Chatoa. Except this circus was not like any regular circus. It apparently had many strange critters and creatures on board. One of them being a half man and half ape hybrid, which appeared as a large hairy creature. The creature was very hostile and would attack any person or animal that got close to it. So a search party was quickly put together to recapture this beast, but they left empty handed and the monster was never seen again. Many people who claim to see Bigfoot could be mistaken for this creature, but who knows? It could just be some 7 foot tall hairy guy minding his own business, but apparently if you go to the swamps near Chatawa, you might catch a glimpse of these ape like creatures. In the hump for our list, we have the Bukit Tima Monkey Man of Singapore. In the Bukit Tima region of Singapore, there is a forest dwelling primate covered from head to toe in grey hair. Sightings of this creature are exceedingly rare but they all seem to happen in the dead of night. 
The first account of the Bukit Timah Monkey Man was from an elder back in 1805. He recalled seeing an ape-like creature walking upright in the Bukit Timah region. But it wasn't until World War II when sightings of this creature skyrocketed. Many Japanese soldiers stationed in Singapore will report a grey primate-like creature standing almost up to 7 feet tall in the rainforest. Sightings of this creature come and go, but the good thing about it is that it doesn't seem to be aggressive or anything. Instead, it just kind of stands there, looking at you many at a number four spot with the Minerva monster. Ohio has been having sightings of Bigfoot for the past 75 years. So at this point, if you're walking in the woods and see a giant ape, it wouldn't really be a surprise. But there was one case that kickstarted the whole Bigfoot hype all those years ago. And this is the case of the Minerva monster. Sightings began in 1942 when locals reported an ape-like monster in Minerva, Ohio. And the concern for this monster only grew when a group of teenagers randomly disappeared in the forest near the area. The case of this monster was brought up to the public's attention when local resident Hal Caden told the story of encountering the Minerva monster himself. It began in August of 1978 when Caden and his friends were sitting on the back porch of their home. When they're all sitting and talking, they began to hear strange noises near the chicken coop of their home. When they looked towards that direction, all they could find is two pairs of yellow eyes staring right at them. One of the friends decided to turn on their vehicle headlights and they described a creature 7 feet tall with quote unquote black and brown matted hair that covered its head and face. Number 3, Murfreesboro Mud Monster In 1973, a young couple went for a romantic late night drive in the town of Murfreesboro, Illinois. Only after a few minutes of driving, they decide to park near a river when all of a sudden, they hear a shrieking noise that could only be described as an eagle shrieking in a microphone. They soon scan the area and heard another loud shriek. They looked in the direction it came from and noticed a bush that was shaking. Then they saw the mud monster and described it as a 7 feet tall thick fur with a footprint closely resembling that of Bigfoot. This monster kept terrorizing the town for weeks, then out of the blue it just disappeared, leaving the town in peace all of a sudden. At a number 2 spot with the Muggian monster. This beast is also known as Arizona's Bigfoot and as you can see from the photos, you can probably see why. This monster is said to live on the Muggian Rim, which is a steep cliff that runs 200 miles from eastern Arizona to New Mexico. The monster is also spotted within the Ponderosa Pine Forest as well. Those who have spotted it have said it stood 8 feet tall, covered in hair and fur, and walked upright. The same people who saw it also noted how territorial and how violent they can be. It's said that if you smell rotting fish, then the Muggian monster is nearby. So when that happens, be sure to dip straight out of the area. Similar to Bigfoot, there has been countless sightings and other forms of questionable evidence. All the way at a number one spot with the Flintville Monster. During the 1970s, a creature described to be like Bigfoot was terrorizing the people of Flintville, Tennessee. The monster would come out of forests and begin to slaughter people's livestock, abduct children, and even go after people's vehicles. The first sighting was in April 1976 when a woman decided to call the cops and report that a 7 to 8 feet tall hairy creature had come out of the forest, came straight to her car, pulled the radio antennas off, then jumped on top of the vehicle aggressively. This story would kickstart the legend of the Flintville monster and many other people would come out to report their own experiences with this creature. Shortly after this, a mother claimed to see the beast run towards her son who was playing in the field. She came up just in time to get her children out of the way and run back home and call the cops. When the cops arrived, they didn't find the creature, but instead they found these 16 inch footprints and blood all around them. Number 10, Patterson Gimlin footage. The Patterson-Gimlin footage has drawn the greatest attention since it is the strongest piece of proof proving Bigfoot's existence. Bigfoot believers and skeptics alike have examined it frame by frame in search of data to support or refute the reality of the creature. Unfortunately, there isn't any CRISPR video available for enthusiasts. Bigfoot sightings are based solely on dubious photographs, despite the fact that smartphones are widely used now, and that it seems like someone should have by now captured stronger evidence. The Patterson-Gimlin movie is really intriguing, but the question of is Bigfoot real still exists. Although it doesn't exactly resemble a human dressed as a gorilla, the shakiness, loss of focus, and deteriorated film grain prevent viewers from getting a clear image. Number 9, Sasquatch the Quest. A Canadian called Adrian Erickson started a significant field investigation into Sasquatch in both Canada and the US in 2005. 
The ultimate objective of the effort is to have Bigfoot classified as a species or subspecies. Documentary's debut will coincide with Dr. Melba Ketchum's DNA research results. Because of the excitement around the never before seen Bigfoot video and sightings, the movie has made an entry on the list. One illustration is a 2005 video showing a young Bigfoot eating pancakes. The video, which was recorded in Kentucky, appears to show a Bigfoot enjoying a meal for several seconds. A hand enters the frame at the video's conclusion and drags the little Sasquatch away. The video ultimately made its way online and stirred up debate. The audience was highly intrigued in the Bigfoot footage as they always are. Number 8 Siberian Sasquatch a Russian documentary on Bigfoot in Siberia was published in 2009. The addition of a three second long clip depicting an unidentified humanoid in the movie has made it famous. 77% of Russia's areas is in Siberia. The region, that, uh, the region that includes a large portion of the Eurasian steppe, it stretches south from the Arctic Ocean to the hills of north central Kazakhstan and the national borders of both China and Mongolia, and east from the Arctic Ocean to the watershed between the Pacific and Arctic drainage basins. Sasquatch encounters and recent sightings have a lengthy history throughout the Siberian mountain regions. A big humanoid figure that closely resembles the Sasquatch profile is depicted in the footage. It was filmed by an unnamed person. Number 7 Estes Park Bigfoot a man named Jim Holder and his son filmed an unidentified being strolling around Estes Park, Colorado in 2007. The Rocky Mountain National Parks Administration Center is located in Estes Park. Unfortunately, the video clip has terrible viewing quality because it was captured using a cell phone. Numerous Colorado publications reported on the Bigfoot sighting, along with reports that a real Sasquatch footage existed. Jim Holder and his family, however, experienced a great deal of hostility once the recording was made public due to claims that the tape was phony. The Holder family made a public statement claiming Jim had been a victim of a hoax in the months after the clips was broadcast. Number 6 Helicopter Hunt Bigfoot Hunted by Helicopter is the title of a video that was uploaded to YouTube on February 17th, 2011. The message my husband and I took our kids target shooting was included in the original upload of the video, which was shot at an undisclosed location. We were bothered the entire time by a helicopter flying above our heads. At first, we assumed that they were interested in the context of our shooting. When we later watched the film, we saw what appeared to be Bigfoot racing through the trees. Now, we can infer the helicopter was looking for the Bigfoot. Okay, let's have a nice conversation about how governments over the world are erasing Sasquatch evidence. There are reports of helicopters and armed agents ordering witnesses to retract specific Sasquatch films to retract specific Sasquatch claims if you look deep enough into the Bigfoot archives. Number 5 New York Bigfoot Robert Pridgen recorded one of the most well-known Bigfoot videos at the Lembo Lake campground in the U.S. state of New York. Lembo Lake hosted a festival in 1996, drawing a sizable crowd for camping and entertainment. While one of the groups was filming near the fire, they saw some peculiar activity in the trees. Six years after the incident, the creature's videotape was found. In the video, a person is seen hoisting a smaller animal into the tree. While the youngster is seen for 44 seconds, the larger object is only captured for 14. Number 4 Great North Figure an IMAX formatted documentary from 2001 titled The Great North. The movie is a recreation of the renowned Robert Flaherty documentary Nanook of the North, a thorough depiction of the Inuit people who subsisted on the icy Arctic North scenery. The narrator of The Great North is Nanook's grandson. He takes the audience on a fantastic journey across the majestic Canadian backdrop, taking in the gorgeous scenery and the amazing snow-covered countryside. Number 3 Memorial Day Footage In the US state of Washington in 1996, a well-known Sasquatch encounter was captured on camera. Lori Pate used a high 8mm video camera to capture it. The video has received some of the greatest attention and analysis ever. Prior to the figure being captured on camera rushing across the pitch, a series of loud vocalizations were audible for about 5 minutes, according to the witnesses' accounts. The humanoid was spotted moving from the edge of the woodland to a place beyond a big tree before the clip started. The slowed down analysis of the motion is crucial to comprehend what is happening, just like in the previous films in this article. Number 2 Bigfoot Goes to Florida 
Southeast Manatee County, Florida in the United States has the unincorporated community of Miyaka City. A big humanoid figure can be seen in a video that was captured in Miyaka City in May 2008. Three Clips of Sasquatch was the title of the video that was uploaded on YouTube. Each video depicts a distinct aspect of a Bigfoot sighting. Although the footage resembles prior Sasquatch recordings, no complete body image is ever recorded. This raises immediate doubts about the footage's veracity together with the fact that it was wasn't posted in a single continuous piece. Number 1. Crimean Bigfoot The Crimean Peninsula is home to the Autonomous Republic of Crimea, a part of Ukraine, which is situated on the Black Sea's northern coast. Folklore and contemporary encounters with Sasquatch have a long history on the Crimean Peninsula. SD Nikitin, a YouTube user, uploaded a video of a humanoid monster wandering through Crimean woodlands on March 18th, 2011. A friend of mine who was enjoying a picnic in the woods when he saw this footage claimed to have seen an unknown monster. He was so startled by the sights that he initially believed he was intoxicated and that the thing wasn't visible, but he later watched the film. I'm sure that must have been a shock for him. Number 10, we have the Dark Watchers of California. California. The St. Lucia Mountains or the St. Lucia Range is a rugged mountain range located in the coastal area of Central California. For many years, people have looked up at these tall peaks and spotted tall, cloaked figures looking down at them, and in the blink of an eye, they are gone. These 7 to 15 feet tall mystical entities stand motionless, wearing only a black cloak and broad brimmed hats. Sightings were reported all the way back from the 1700s when the Spanish had just arrived on the land and noticed these tall, dark watches on the mountain. Despite these these entities not doing any physical harm, they are always watching, making people in the area feel worried and scared of the feeling of not being alone. Some have said that the Dark Watchers are a group of migrants stuck on the mountain, while others believe that they are there to warn people of the danger ahead or in their future. Regardless, if you see these guys, your hike is probably going to end up a lot worse. Number 9, a Snallygaster. Don't be deceived by the odd name, this creature is one of the most confusing and terrifying creatures I've ever mentioned ever. Said to have resided in Frederick County, the Snallygaster is a dragon-like beast that is described as a half reptile and half bird that lives deep in the caves of South Mountain. Apart from its eye-popping looks, the beast is said to be responsible for stealing and eating farm animals and even children. The creature would be a silent killer and would swoop down from the skies before you would even realize. The Snallygaster would consume its victims by first draining all of its blood before taking it to its lair to consume later. The last sighting in Frederick County occurred in March 1909 when three men fought the creature outside a railroad station for nearly an hour and a half before chasing it into the woods of Carroll County. However, who knows if this really went down because I believe a creature of this caliber can easily take out three humans, but maybe that's just me. At number 8, we have Alti. In southeastern Georgia, along the 137 mile long Altamaha River, some say a gigantic sea monster is lurking in the depths with reports dating back since the 1800s. Alti, or by its original name, Altamaha, is a river sea monster that was first devoured by Captain Delano of the schooner Eagle. He described the creature being 70 feet long with a circumference the size of a barrel and the head resembling an alligator. Reports of the creature started to amass with every description describing it as a 20 to 30 feet long sturgeon like fish, but in my opinion, this thing looks like a distant relative to the Loch Ness Monster. Don't you guys see it? Over the years, there were many sightings of Alti and they remain consistent in their descriptions. Then more recently, a video by Jeff Warren shared an unknown creature that could resemble Alti, but you guys be the judge of that. Number 7, Pedro Mountain Mummy. The Shoshone Indians of Wyoming believed in a race of tiny people and said they were responsible for the deaths of their comrades with the use of poisonous arrows. They described this race of people to stand from 20 inches to 3 feet tall and they gave them the name Nemiria. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. These people were known to be very hostile, not only to the natives, but to their own kind as well. It was said that they would take the life of their own people if they became too sick and couldn't help the community anymore. So basically, if you're old here, you're gone. After years and years, there has been no solid evidence for these little people until 1932. A 14-inch fully formed mummy was found in the San Pedro Mountains near Casper, Wyoming. When they examined the object, they confirmed that it did have real human remains, although it was unclear if it was a native child or this race of little people. Eventually, the mummy would be passed on through different people, but all of them had one thing in common. They would be faced with bad luck as long as they possessed the mummy, which led many to believe it was cursed. Number 6, Torch Lake Monster. The tale of the Torch Lake Monster dates back in the 1960s and 70s. Obviously, it takes place in Torch Lake, which is located in the North Michigan and is also their second largest lake in the state. A fisherman and coach by the name of Dave Foley is credited with spotting the creature first and telling stories of it since he worked by the lake for a while. 
Legend goes that the giant creature has a lizard's body, the head of a cat, one brown and one blue eyes along with slimy green skin. The lake is approximately 285 feet deep which makes what's lying underneath much more scarier and worrisome. Nighttime is when this creature is said to arise from the depths. At this time, many swimmers and boats go missing, only to wash ashore with no evidence of his demise. In the Humber list, we have Richmond Vampire. Originating in the state of Virginia, this is not your ordinary vampire story. Instead, in 1925, the Churchill train tunnel collapsed with workers still inside. This was a tragedy for all on board because if you didn't pass away, you were badly injured. So surprisingly, in the wreckage, a bloody man appeared with jagged teeth and skin hanging off his bones. Everyone had thought it was just a mere survivor of the incident, but here's where it gets kind of weird. As he got closer to the man, the man quickly jumped and ran away to the nearby Hollywood Cemetery, and he disappeared into the mausoleum within. They then say the vampire still inhabits cemetery grounds, which has led many satanic and cult groups to visit and attempt to summon the vampire once again. Number 4, Albatwitch. In the forest of Columbia, Pennsylvania is a 4 foot tall hairy creature known as Albatwitch. Their name is just short for apple snitch since they are known to be snatching apples left and right. People who walk near along the Susquehanna River claim to have these small creatures violently throw apples at them as they've tried to push them away from their homes. Their homes are said to be on top of treetops where they would only come down to gather apples. These hairy humanoids are often mistaken as Bigfoot children since they are often reported in the area as well. What if these guys are actually Bigfoot children? This would explain their small stature at least. Number 3, the Nain Rouge. It said that since the city of Detroit was founded in Michigan, bad luck has befallen the area. It's all because of the devilish red imp known as Nine Rouge, and it's said that he cursed the entire city. Folklore suggests that Detroit's founder, Antoine de la Moth Cadillac, was warned by a fortune teller that he would become face to face with the Nine Rouge and he would have to treat him with the most utmost respect and attention. Except this information came straight through this year and right out the other. Because when he finally met up with this creature, he hit him with his crane and told him to get out of his way. This is when the angry imp cursed the entire city of Detroit and Cadillac as well. Shortly after, Cadillac would lose his fortune and have to move back to France. But misfortune still occurred in the city. It said that in all of the disastrous events that happened in Detroit, the Nine Rouge could be spotted just before each event. It also been seen there in Detroit's riots of 1967 and 1976's ice storm that caused electricity to go out for days. Number 2, Chessie. Basically Maryland's very own version of Nessie or the Loch Ness Monster. Just like the beast from Scotland, Chessie is a large serpent-like creature that lurks in the depths of Chesapeake Bay. Witnesses claim that the monster is around 25 feet to 40 feet long and it uses its body as a sign curve to swim around the water. The sightings began in 1977 when the mass hysteria hit the locals, believing the creature was truly out there causing a massive disappearances and drownings. The sightings continued all the way to the late 80s when the hype finally died down. Perhaps Chessie just swam away from the area, or maybe it was just the 70s. Or maybe since it was the 70s, everyone just wasn't sober. Also, Steven Spielberg's Jaws came out in 1975, which could have added more paranoia towards the water. You know? At our number one spot, we have the Wendigo. This one is pretty much known to all North Americans, but it's still one of the most terrifying humanoids to ever exist. A Wendigo is said to be a very rare demon, and they are described as strong monsters that have powerful desire to kill and eat their victims. The legend states that a Wendigo can possess you and even turn itself into you if the person is greedy or weak and wandering the woods alone at night. There are multiple myths talking about what Wendigos look like, but majority of them describe them to look like an animal, but with very tall and a skull as a head, long legs, and their whole body covered in hair and drenched in blood. They are said to be very fast with strength like no other, super healing, amazing sense of smell, and is even said to step on water. Jesus? So be very cautious next time you try to camp in this area. At a number 10 spot, we have the Emerald Jewel Wasp. The Emerald Jewel Wasp has the ability to turn cockroaches into zombies. Yup, you heard that right. The wasp manipulation of the cockroach is a truly remarkable and horrifying process. These wasps reproduce by stinging a cockroach and paralyzing it with its venom. The first thing targets the thoracic ganglion, which is part of the central nervous system. This ends up paralyzing the front legs of the cockroach. Then after this, the wasp delivers a second sting, and this time targeting the brain of the cockroach. The stings aren't meant to kill, but to give the wasp control of the cockroach, turning it into a zombie. The wasp then bites off the head of its antennas. It then leads the half-paralyzed brain-dead cockroach along by its antenna, using it as a lead towards its burrow. 
inside of the burrow, it lays eggs inside of the roach in a place known as a coxal plate. Then it buries it alive. While in this tomb, the larvae will hatch from within the cockroach and over a period of a week, they'll begin to feed off the still alive cockroach from the inside. Once it's done eating, it eventually bursts out of the cockroach in a manner reminiscent of the famous scene from the movie Alien. Number nine, the Lyoplorodon. Imagine if you were a creature that is as big as a school bus with an everlasting thirst for blood, gliding through the warm tropical shallow seas of the late Jurassic. This is exactly what the Lyoplorodon was, a massive marine reptile that measured up to 82 feet in length and was also considered one of the deadliest predators in the history of life on Earth. With its massive head, short neck, and powerful flippers, this creature was a formidable predator. Its jaws were lined with needle sharp teeth that were capable of killing any other marine animal at the time. The skull and jaw bones were specifically strengthened to help them withstand the powerful biting force of its jaws. This ancient beast was a true apex predator, preying on other giant marine reptiles and fish, particularly marine crocodiles, sharks, and all sorts of other pliosaurs. But the most impressive prey item on its menu was the 90 foot giant fish known as Elite Sickness. Lyoplorodon was an ambush predator, lying in wait for its prey to pass by. It was capable of holding its breath for at least an hour, making it a stealthy hunter. It also had a nose that was capable of picking up any scent without inhaling any water, similar to a shark, allowing it to detect prey from considerable distances. But Lyoplorodon wasn't just a killing machine, it was also a survival. It was long lived, capable of surviving to over a hundred years old. And like crocodiles, it grew constantly throughout its life. And as a reptile, it still needed to breathe air, but because of its immense size, it could not leave the water, even for short periods of a time. Number eight, the Kandiru. This fish is the only fish feared by men. Why? Well, because it has the ability to swim up your. Yeah, you know. The Candiro is a small parasitic freshwater catfish that is said to be able to enter a man's urethra, attach itself with its spines, and cause immense pain. And I know all my fellow guys can feel this pain through the screen. The legend of this creature has been circulating for centuries, and it is deeply ingrained in the cultural imagination since there is no real evidence of this actually happening but there are many stories of it. The Candiro lives in the Amazon and is said to be attracted to the smell of urine, leading it to swim up a man's urine stream and enter the urethra. The catfish is usually 17 centimeters long and can grow up to 40 centimeters long, and apart from their unique talent of entering a male's urethra, it usually attaches to the gills of larger fish instead and uses their spines on their gills to cling to their prey, causing inflammation, hemorrhage, and then death. The first account of Candiru's entering the human body took place surprisingly in women. Early reports date back to 1829. German biologist von Martius only heard of the story secondhand from local people from the region. The local people of the region supposedly wore jock straps made of coconut shells when they bathed in the river as a preventative measure. It wasn't until 1997 when a 23 year old man claimed that a candiro had jumped from the water into his urethra as he urinated in knee deep water in Brazil. This claim was met with much skepticism and marine biologist Stephen Spott concluded that the candiro's teeth were not strong enough to chew through such tissue. In conclusion, while the legend of the Kanduru is a fascinating one, there seems to be little evidence to support the idea that it is a real threat to human health. But just the fear of having a fish go up your, you know what, doesn't sound too appealing at all and definitely makes it one of the most terrifying creatures to ever exist. At our number 7 spot we have the Bacillosaurus. When we see whales now, we see them as gentle giants. But back in the prehistoric times, these large creatures had teeth like this. This animal was the Bacillosaurus, a prehistoric whale that lived between 40 to 34 million years ago during the late Eocene period. The name Bacillosaurus, which means King Lizard in Greek, is fitting for this formidable creature. Measuring up to 70 feet in length and weighing between 10 to 15 tons, the Bacillosaurus was one of the largest marine animals of its time. Its body structure, more eel-like than whale-like, caused initial confusion among scientists and earned it the name Sea Serpent. Bacillosaurus also possess a unique physical feature, with its blowhead located on its snout. Unlike the more primitive whales that had it at the tip of their snout, or the modern whales and dolphins that have it located between or behind the eyes. But the worst thing was is that these creatures were the top predator in their environment. They basically preyed on sharks and all types of other gigantic predatory fish. And the reason why this is known is because some of these animals are just found with bite marks of this creature. Number six, terror birds. Imagine racing through the vast Argentinian plains and you see a strange feathery bird towering over you. And as you walk up, you see it pecking its prey to death with a hooked beak mounted on its head as big as a horse's. These were the terror birds, the most dominant flightless bird to ever exist. And let me tell you, they truly lived up to their name. These creatures were not only tall, 
10 feet to be exact, but they were also fast and fierce, embodying the power of their predatory dinosaur relatives before them. The terror birds were the only line of carnivorous flightless birds to ever exist. Luckily, these species were kept in the Cenozoic era, some 62 million years ago. But if you wanted to imagine these, just imagine an overgrown ostrich with a beak that can completely crush your skull in one peck. They dominated South America, ruling over a diverse fauna made up of primitive mammalian herbivores and small carnivorous mammals. The terror bird has also been studied extensively and many theories have been proposed about how they hunted. Some scientists believe that they are treated like runners, chasing down their prey with lightning speed, while others think they are more like kickboxers, using their massive beaks to render their prey helpless. But one thing is for sure, these birds had powerful beaks and necks that could withstand a great deal of force, making them one of the most terrifying creatures to ever exist. In the hump of our list, we have sea scorpions. All I gotta say is, eight feet long scorpions? Need I say more? Europterids, also known as sea scorpions, were a group of ancient aquatic predators that roamed the waters during the Paleozoic era over 400 million years ago. Despite their nickname, sea scorpions were not actually scorpions, but they are believed to be closely related to arachnids, a group that includes scorpions, spiders, and horseshoe crabs. These ancient creatures varied in size, with most of the fossil specimens discovered being the size of lobsters or even smaller. However, there are two giant species that stood up in the fossil record. The first is Echelopterus, which may have been the largest anthropod ever to live, measuring up to 7 feet in length. The second pterygoid was just inches shorter and may have been a scavenger, but regardless these guys were huge. These creatures were carnivores as well and they would hunt and eat different aquatic animals using its pincers and spiked tail. These strong and sharp claws helped them firmly hold onto their prey where they couldn't escape and they would be consumed later. They also had compound eyes which also aided in their hunting. And to make these guys even more scarier, they had the ability to walk on land for short periods. This just meant that there were few places for the prey which may have included early anthropods, fish, and amphibians to hide. Their presence in the ocean likely played a role in the evolutionary arms race that led to the development of armored and terrifying predators, spurring the ancestors of modern terrestrial animals to abandon the ocean and if these guys existed today, I bet we would avoid all parts of their natural habitat. Number 4, the Titanoboa. A silent hunter once roamed deep in the South American jungle known as the Titanoboa. The Titanoboa snake was unlike any other animal in history. A true giant among predators. With its massive size and incredible strength, it was the undisputed ruler of the prehistoric jungle 60 million years ago. The death of the giant reptiles left a vacuum at the top of the food chain and Titanoboa gladly stepped up to it. This prehistoric species grew up to 50 feet in length and weighed as much as 2.5 tons. That's as long as a semi-trailer you see on highways and about as twice as heavy as a polar bear. So yeah, pretty terrifying. At its thickest point, Titanoboa was 3 feet wide, which is longer than a human arm for some people. In the hot human jungle, Titanoboa fits right in, its brown skin camouflaged perfectly as it slunk through muddy waters. Its behavior is a topic of debate among paleontologists. Some scientists think it killed by constriction and asphyxiation, while others argue that it kind of behaved like an anaconda, lurking in the shadows and ambushing unsuspecting animals with a stunning blow. Just imagine wandering the jungle and coming face to face with a predator of such monstrous proportions. Portions. It is both mesmerizing, but more so incredibly terrifying to think about. Number three, the Dinosuchus. Just when you thought crocodiles were already terrifying, we have a giant prehistoric crocodile known as a Dinosuchus. Dinosuchus, meaning terror crocodile, was a giant crocodilian that roamed the earth around 72 to 82 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period. This prehistoric creature was likely one of the most terrifying predators of its time, and its discovery is shedding new light on the ancient world of dinosaurs. Dinosuchus had teeth the size of bananas, which were perfect for crushing bones of large prey, such as dinosaurs. Paleontologists have found evidence of the Dinosuchus bite marks on a number of fossil bones, including those of theropod dinosaurs, hadrosaurs, and turtles. The bite marks just showed how dangerous the animal could have been, and scientists theorize that the creature likely used a technique known as the death roll to take down its prey. You know that method still used by alligators and crocodiles to this day? To hunt, these creatures would lie in wait in shallow waters at the edge of the sea, and when an unsuspecting dinosaur came to take a drink, the dinosaur just would drag them into the water and proceed to tear them apart with its powerful jaws. What makes this creature particularly interesting is that it outweighed even the largest theropod dinosaurs, making it the chief predator in the ecosystem and possibly the largest crocodilian ever known. Imagine if it still lurked our waters. Number two, the Dunkleosteus. 
While we have a piranha that can rip through human flesh, there's another fish that can chomp straight through bone. This creature is known as the Dunkleosteus. Let's just all be thankful they went extinct. So during the late Devonian period, around 360 to 380 million years ago, Dunkleosteus ruled over the world's oceans with an iron fist. Named in honor of Dr. David Dunkel, former curator of vertebrae paleontology at Cleveland Museum of Natural History, this fish had giant bone plates in its head and jaws that served as tank-like protective armor, making it an even more fearsome predator. Dunkleosteus was massive, estimated to be 20 to 33 feet long and weighing up to 1 to 4 tons. So not only did this fish pack a punch, but it was a complete unit of a creature. Despite its lack of teeth, this fish was truly a force to be reckoned with. Its bite packed anywhere around 11,000 to 21,000 pounds per square inch of force, even more powerful than a great white shark. Its jaw plates were also self-sharpening, making it capable of eating almost anything, including its own kind. Research suggests that this creature was so powerful that it may have been the main cause of extinction for many of the species in the oceans, which is just so insane to think about. Number one, the Anthroplora. Are you afraid of little centipedes? Well, you're gonna hate this guy. Introducing the Anthroplora. Anthroplora was a giant centipede that lived during the late Carboniferous period, around 299 to 318 million years ago. It is considered one of the largest land invertebrates of the time, with some species reaching up to 2.5 meters in length and over 30 centimeters in width. It had a segmented body that was covered in a hard exoskeleton, which protected it from predators. Each segment of its body had two pairs of legs, giving it an impressive total of up to 236 legs. It likely moved by undulating its body in a wave-like motion, using its many legs to crawl over the forest floor. Luckily for all the meaty animals, this creature was a herbivore, and probably fed on the lush vegetation that existed during this period, such as club mosses, ferns, and horsetails. It likely had a slow lumbering movement and a low metabolic rate, which would have allowed it to survive on the relatively low nutrient vegetation of the time. Remains of Anthroplora have been found in Europe and North North America, indicating that it was a widespread and successful species. However, like many other species from this period, it went extinct at the end of it, possibly due to the change in climate or the evolution of new predators. At our number 10 spot, we have the Mongolian Death Worm. The Gobi Desert, located between Mongolia and China, is said to have the Mongolian Death Worm, otherwise known as the Intestine Worm, due to its appearance of being fleshy and red in color. This two to seven feet long creature has the ability to spit out venomous liquid out of its mouth, and if you even get close enough enough to touch the creature, it's believed that the entire body is covered in this sticky, poisonous substance that will kill you just on touch alone. And if that wasn't enough, it can even electrocute you in the same way in Yokan. While movies of the creature depicted as this large, colossal being, it's believed to be a lot smaller at around 7 feet in its total length. But regardless, the fact that this creature can hide literally anywhere in the desert sands and come out basically whenever it wants, and it has no weaknesses, it makes it one of the most dangerous and scariest ones on this list. At number 9 spot, we have the Diao Xi Gui. This mythical creature is also known as the Hanged Ghost, and it's said that the people who have taken their life through hanging or have been executed that way come back and become this vengeful spirit. They claim the spirit appears as a decaying corpse with a long red tongue that hangs far out of their mouth, never going back into their mouth. And let me tell you, these guys smell horrendous as well. So you could imagine how terrifying this would be to encounter. Except if you're a KISS fan and you're used to this sticking tongue stuff. According According to legend, these spirits will appear to unsuspecting people during night, usually by a tree or a building. Then they will try to convince others to join them in the afterlife. So in China, it's best to avoid places where people have taken their life because this is where these spirits tend to wander. If you decide to do the complete opposite, the creature will follow you around for your entire life, causing bad luck every corner of the way. At number 8 spot, we have the Akaname. The Akaname is straight out of Japanese myth. It is described to be this small goblin looking creature about the size of a child child, except they're hideous. They have greasy slimy hair and their body is completely oily. If that didn't make you uncomfortable, maybe the fact that they use their long tongues to lift bathroom floors will. But don't worry, they won't appear in clean bathrooms as their dirty long tongues have nothing to lick. Instead, they target bathrooms that have been neglected and are dirty. So people, do yourself and everyone a favor and clean your bathrooms. 
please. They lick and devour any of the filth, grease, hair, and waste that they come across. And the Akinami also choose to stay away from humans, but instead they creep in the darkness and multiply at rates comparable to a disease spreading. They come in both one-eyed and two-eyed variations, which only adds to the fact that these are grotesque creatures. So I stress this again, clean your bathroom so we can all avoid these type of problems, including stuff with these ugly guys. At number 7 spot, we have the Zhangxi, also known as the Chinese Hopping Vampire. The Zhangxi comes from a phrase meaning stiff corpse. They are psychic vampire zombies, yes, you heard that right, who feeds off a person's chi rather than their blood. And for those who don't know, chi is considered to be a person's life force, which means that it's the energy that flows throughout your entire body, basically giving you life in a sense. So unlike the vampires we have over here in the West, the Zhangxi prefers not to consume humans or our blood, and they also aren't able to walk, so they are seen hopping around with their hands out in the front of them to maintain their balance. Many believe these creatures are created following a violent death, an improper burial, use of supernatural powers, or you get bit by another one. Remember, they're vampires and zombies, so don't get it confused. This is a horror hybrid of the century. At number 6 spot, we're the Sigbin. Straight out of my home country is yet another disgusting and hideous creature. This creature is said to have the appearance of a half hornless goat and half kangaroo, but when I look at it, I think of a chupacabra, but worse. It has the ability to use its long kangaroo tail to whip others with the force able to knock someone out. They lurk mainly in the night and are known to hunt anyone or anything they see. They'll use their sharp teeth to suck out the blood blood out of their victims, or they'll use it to seek out children to take their hearts just to use for decorations. So pretty horrible stuff, I know, I'm sorry kids. When they do walk around, they actually prefer to walk backwards with their head tucked between their legs like this. Locals in the Philippines claim that some people capture them and keep them as guardians for their property or in these very large jars. I have no idea what my people are doing, but yeah, let's not do this. In the hump of our list, we have the Zheng Lot. These are small creatures located in Indonesia, but mainly claim their presence in specifically in Java. They take on the appearance of a deformed humanoid doll with long growing hair and long nails. The doll by itself causes no harm but when you begin to feed the doll animal blood or even human blood, it will start to work as black magic. A Zhengla is believed to belong to the vampire family because of its main nourishment comes from the blood of animals or humans. The owner of the Zhengla must feed the creature with a drop of their blood each and every single day. If the owner fails to do so, it is believed that their loved ones will face dire consequences. The blood must not be fed directly to the mouth of the Zhengla, but instead be placed beside it. It's believed that the Zhenglas are the spirits of those who passed away after they had practiced black magic in order to obtain everlasting life. Except when they're met with death, the earth would refuse to accept their body, instead turning them into this hideous bloodthirsting creature. At number 4, we have the Flying Head. This one is definitely the strangest one on this list, but it's still scary so bear with me. The Flying Head or the Shurubotoshi is, is one of Japan's most craziest mythical creatures because it's literally just a floating head. It's believed to be an ancient deity that literally is just a flying head that goes around and eats people. They prefer to attack humans by surprise, by hiding on the top of trees, or in places where you're completely alone. When they catch up to you, they will drop quickly to the ground like a stone, either squishing you to death or trapping you in its mouth to chew you right after. Either way, you will pass away. If you do manage to evade them, they will stop at nothing to get you, and will do so while laughing uncontrollably, which only makes this encounter that much much more terrifying. At number 3 spot we have the Tao Ti. These creatures from Chinese mythology are definitely one of the most hideous looking creatures from this list of creatures. And we know how beautiful China makes some of these creatures so this one was just a surprise. They are considered to be one of the 4 evil creatures of the world due to its malevolence and destruction as a creature. If you ever wanted to see these boys in action... Depiction of this creature would appear mainly on bronze artifacts, but that first glimpse of them on that movie was all we needed to know that these creatures are not good. At number 2 spot, we have the Tengu. If you ever seen this emoji, then you know what a Tengu somewhat looks like. These creatures live in the mountains and appear to have large feathery wings and wearing a monk robe. Based on the emoji, you already know that their face is red with a long nose and the head of a bird. Originally, the Tengu were seen as evil spirits that caused pure destruction and chaos everywhere they went. This was because Buddhist practice 
practices showed that the Tengu were demons and tricksters who opposed Buddha. Tengu were considered demons of death and destruction by Buddhists, but gradually softened into troublesome protectors of forests and mountains, which is the role they continue to play in Japanese folklore. I mean, they look pretty cool and I see it all the time every time I go on my keyboard, and it would be nice if they use them in a video game or something because they're pretty cool looking creatures. At number one spot, we're the Nian. To end our point, we got yet another Chinese mythical creature because there are just too many not to mention. The story of the Nian goes that they would feast on human flesh every single New Year's Day. On this day, they would come out of their hiding place in the mountains and raid villages, eat their crops, and when that wasn't enough, they would attack the humans. Except they would begin to notice that the creature would run away by the end of the night when they started to celebrate New Year's. They started to believe it was because they used a lot of the color red, which was the same color as the Nian, which could have acted as intimidation. They also noticed that fire and a lot of noise would scare away the creature, so every single year the festivals got bigger and louder to frighten the beast away for good. The Nian is described as being a flat faced lion with the body of a bull and the horn of a unicorn. And ever since, the Nian has been used during the festivals to commemorate the once terrifying creature. Well, Starting our list right, we have the infamous Lucifer. Lucifer to many is the epitome of evil. And although he is that and more, he was once revered as the wisest, the greatest, and the most beautiful angel in all of God's creation. I mean, look at the guy. He's just downright gorgeous. It doesn't look like our guy, right? Ah! Ah, stay away. He's a devil! So how did he go from this to this? Everyone seemed to praise Lucifer for his beauty and his power, but eventually that praise would make Lucifer prideful of himself. This prayer led to him questioning God himself. He didn't believe in predestination, which is a concept that involves the destiny of all beings under God's will and command. He wanted everyone to be free-willed. Eventually, Lucifer would argue with God until it led out to an all-out war in the heavens. Lucifer would encounter Michael the Archangel, and they had a battle which is said to have nearly ravaged all of heaven from the sheer force of their power alone. God then took the power of all the angels in his name and molded them into one being which defeated Lucifer. Lucifer fell for days, bringing one third of the angelic host with him. In Luke 10.18, Jesus says, quote, I saw Satan falling like lightning from heaven. From here, Lucifer became the ruler of hell and made it his own to strike back at God's most favorite creation, which is us. Stealing our number nine spot, we have Beelzebub. This former angel was Lucifer's right hand man. So they both kind of had that evil vibe, you feel? Beelzebub is a former seraph, just like Lucifer. Angel Lesson 101. Seraphs are the highest choir of angels in heaven. They are as close to God as the archangels, so they are pretty much a big deal in heaven. He was made before the creation of heaven and earth, so he is one of the oldest angels, which brought a lot of wisdom and knowledge in the heavens. When the angel rebellion happened, he was one of the first angels to have fallen and woken up. Due to this, he was the advisor to the devil and was even the one who recommended to attack God's creation, which is us humans. Like, come on, Beelzebub, you couldn't pick anyone else? At our number eight spot, we have Andrus. Yes, the former two angels we mentioned are probably the most darkest and the most evil ones. I mean, who's more evil than Lucifer? Well, Andrus comes pretty close to it. He is often regarded as a great Marquis of Hell or the Grey Knight. He was a skilled swordsman and assisted in Lucifer's rebellion. After the fall, he was depicted as a humanoid with angel wings and an owl's head. He rode a black wolf and held his bright sharp sword on it. Andrus is one of the most violent devils to summon as he will gladly execute any person the conjurer desires. So he's kind of like a personal hitman. Right at our number 7 spot, we have Belvagor. This is literally the demon lord that handles the sin of sloth. He is also one of the seven great kings who rule over hell. He ended up there for a good reason. When he was in heaven, he was a part of the choir of principalities, which was the third choir of the third angelic sphere. He was a very lazy angel and didn't do much for anyone except himself. These would foreshadow his sloth tendencies. When the angel war occurred, he didn't choose any side. But just because he didn't choose God's side, he was banished, turning him to the archdemon of Sloth. He comes up on earth to draw victims into a constant state of procrastination and idle dreaming. Probably sounds like a few of us watching. 
Surprisingly, at our number six spot, we have the Grigori. This group of angels are often regarded as the Watchers. They are created for the sole purpose to guide the first humans on Earth. These angels were both physically and spiritually gigantic. Despite their large stature, they worked together as one. They were so great at what they did, but as humans evolved, so did they. But sexually, they would eventually make mortal wives bear their children, which created a horrible abomination known as the Nephilim. These were man-eating giants that took over humanity. So what did God do? The Great Flood. Hey Noah, you ready? Right in the hump of our list, we have Belial. He is often regarded as hell's brightest fire and the king of evil. So he probably doesn't have a single good bone in his body. Before his fall from grace, Belial is one of heaven's most beautiful angels. And he was created right after Lucifer. So I guess God just made all of the most beautiful angels at one specific time. He was also very powerful. As an angel, Belial was able to slay numerous angels during the war and as a demon, he slaughtered large demonic armies that attempted to move against him or any of the other seven great kings. He was noted to have a strong, attractive voice. After his fall, he would become the demon of lies and guilt because his voice was that strong. All the way at our number four, we have Furfur. This demon is known as the Earl of Hell and the ruler of the 29 legions of demons. He appears in the form of a deer with a fiery tail and angel wings. In my opinion, he looks majestic, doesn't he? He can force love between any two humans and is also capable of raising storms filled with thunder, lightning, and absurd wind speeds. To summon him, he must be placed within a magician's triangle. But as you're trying to do this, everything he tries to tell you is false. Only when he is in the triangle is when he begins speaking the truth. But I still wouldn't trust his demon. All the way at our number three spot, we have Mammon. He is considered the demon of wealth and greed. This is all because when he was an angel in heaven, he was depicted as forever looking down at heaven's golden pavement rather than God himself. His lust for gold and other riches is what caused his downfall. In the rebellion, he didn't care about either side because he only cared about the wealth of God and how he could get it himself. He appeared as a wolf-like creature with golden materials scattered all around his body. Okay, Mammon, jeez, you're tripped out. At number two spot, we have Abezitvo. This demon is a one-winged fallen angel who followed Beelzebub from his fall from heaven. After his treason was revealed to all other angels, they left him with only one red wing. But once he got banished, he didn't stop his terror. He was said to visit ancient Egypt and influence the Pharaoh to do many things, such as chasing the fleeing Israelite slaves. Except this is where he met his demise. You remember that parting of the Red Sea with Moses? Yes, he was crushed by its collapse and he ended up imprisoned by the pillar of water. Until King Solomon freed him and instead used him to hold up his temple in the air until its full completion. Taking our number one spotter list, we have Adramaleech. I like to call this one the peacock demon because just look at it. Peacocks are pretty fashionable creatures, which kind of makes sense why Adramaleech was Satan's wardrobe and his personal supervisor. This fallen angel's appearance has a human torso, a mule head with peacock feathers on his back. He got banished from heaven from Archangel Raphael and ever since only served Satan. He was a pagan god, so many would sacrifice their own children in a fire for him. So it's pretty much dark stuff. At a number 10 spot, we have La Pata Sola. Deep in the Amazon River lies a deceiving and a vicious demon. Their name is La Pata Sola, or one foot due to having one amputated leg. But don't be deceived by their disability. This wilderness demon has the ability to shapeshift into a beautiful damsel in distress. She will lure male victims deep into the jungle and only there will she transform into this one foot creature before devouring them into many, many pieces. The legend has many variations. In one, she is a mother who took her son's life and banished into the forest. In another, she was a manipulative wife who had an affair and when the husband found out, he proceeded to take her life while chopping off one of her legs with an ax. If you're a girl, she really has no reason to go after you but it's still recommended to watch out for a lonely girl who has a hooked nose, big lips, and tangled hair when you go to Colombia's various mountains, forests, and other remote areas. I wish I could tell you guys to watch a live movie on this creature, but... At a number nine spot, we have El Cibon. Just north of the Amazon rainforest lies a tropical grassland known as Los Llanos. 
And if you happen to be taking a hike and hear a distant whistle, your fate has already been doomed. This whistle is from the restless spirit known as El Sibon, or Whistler Man when translated. He is reported to be a three meter tall creature wearing farmer clothes and holding a giant brown bag. As mentioned, his whistle is the signal of death. In other instances, he appears on people's doorways, unloading while counting bones straight out of his bag. And if a person dares to stop his counting, he will go after their entire family. Legend goes that he became this malevolent spirit after he murdered his own father. He then fled to the wilderness and passed away from starvation. From there, his spirit now stalks the grasslands and attacks any drunk or lost person who happens to be in his way. So on your next visit, be sure to whistle on your hikes to scare the living hell out of anyone. At number 8 salt, we have Juan Machete. This legend talks about one of the most powerful men in the region at the time, and he went by the name of Juan Francisco Ortiz. To become one of the most powerful men, it was said that he made a pact with the devil where he traded his wife and his children for a lot of money, cattle, and land. The devil then commanded Juan to conduct a ritual where he would grab a toad and a hen. He would then sew up their eyes and then bury them on Good Friday at exactly 12 at night. Once that was finished, the devil appeared just before him and said, quote, the pact is made until the day I decide. As expected, his life prospered for years, but as with all deals with the devil, it ended off horribly. After years of good luck and fortune, his happiness slowly faded away as he already got everything he wanted in life except for love. From his depressive state, he went into the forest with all of his fortune and buried himself alive. Now Juan Machete is said to lurk deep in the woods of Macarena, who is constantly looking to attack anyone who comes close to his buried treasure. At our number 7 spot, we have El Sobron. Otherwise known as Colombia's boogeyman, El Sobron, which translates to the big hat, and it's no surprise why he's named that. He is also known as the Black Rider for wearing all black while riding a black horse, and behind this horse are two fierce black dogs that are bound by these huge chains, waiting to be released to devour anyone who dares to cross their path. Those fortunate to survive an encounter with El Sabaron described him as a skeleton covered by this enormous hat. He is known to attack anyone who runs into him, but he prefers to go after men without honor, which includes the drunks, the gambling addicts, or the cheaters. At number 6 spot, we have Los Lanos. Los Lanos, or La Llorona, directly translates to the weeping woman, which perfectly describes the behavior of this malevolent spirit. She appears as a lost woman who is carrying a child through the Colombian streets at night. She's seen wearing a dirty white gown that covers her face and screams for help to lure victims into her grasp. From there, she will offer the baby to the victim, where the infant will place a curse, turning the victim into La Llorona next. This legend varies as this spirit is a part of many different Latino and Hispanic cultures in all sorts of places in North and South America. Some say that she was a former wife who found out that her husband was cheating. In a rage, she took her own life. Others state that she was a jealous woman who took the lives of her children because she lost her own tragically. Regardless of the story, if you hear a weeping girl in the middle of the night, don't try to be a superhero. Call for help and play with your surroundings. Last thing you want to see is this, pop-up warning. At the hump of our list, we have La Tonda. In Colombia's Pacific Ocean coastlines lies an ugly, monstrous witch who snatches unbaptized babies, naughty children, and unfaithful husbands, and takes them to the mountains to make them their lovers. La Tonda appears at first as a concerned mother who is just asking for help, and as people follow her deeper and deeper into the mountain, she slowly shapeshifts into this ugly, deformed woman who reeks of death. As mentioned, her victims are kept into the mountains where they'll be kept as slave lovers, and the only way to break out of her trance is to get a priest or relatives of the victim and play noise in the forest like drums. This will cause La Tunda to run away, causing the victim to break free out of the trance. At a number 4 spot, we have La Bola de Fuego. This is said to be the spirit of a vicious, grumpy old lady. So it goes that she was in charge of taking care of her grandchildren, but from the start, she failed to teach them any sort of manners or moral principles. So after years, they would grow up to steal, assault, and even murder. So when the lady passed away, she was cursed to travel around the globe surrounded in flames. Another variation of the story talks about a woman who was burned alive along with her two children and this caused her to be this malevolent spirit ball. I don't know. Now the spirit is completely engulfed in flames and it's reported to be about 2 meters in diameter. Witnesses claimed it appeared to them as an extremely bright lantern that was shaking violently. In the Philippines, there are stories of these glowing balls chasing after people until they passed away. So this one hits close to home. At number 3 spot with El Mohan. He's described as a stout man with a sunburned face, long hair, and piercing eyes. Don't know about you, but he kind of looks like a Neanderthal looking figure with his large hands and feet, but he also has these long nails that he uses as sharp claws. And let me tell you, he is a woman lover, woman persuader. His whole purpose is to pursue women. He does this by tricking women with his deceiving charm and various luxuries including gold rings, bracelets, and gems. His victims are manipulated and then taken to the mountains where he resides in the series of cave systems within. Aside from snatching women, he is also 
known for stealing bait hooks and scaring away fish, stopping local fishermen from coming home for the good catch of the day. Al Mohan is said to be the main culprit to the disappearance of women who were last spotted near the rivers that are close to caves, and it's said that when someone drowns, it's because Al Mohan did it. At number two spot, we have La Mohana. If you live in Cartagena de Indias, beware of La Mohana, otherwise known as the Mohana. In other iterations, she is referred to as a mother of water. She appears as a woman with golden hair who lives underwater in a house made of stone. This is a shape shifting spirit that acts like sirens in a way where she would lure victims either from being a damsel in distress or just a concerned woman looking for help. As sirens are, their preferred victims are men where they would lure them with seduction. When the men get too close, she screams loud as she pulls them underwater where she'll proceed to drown them. Story goes that in Cartagena de la Colonia, a woman lived there with her husband and her son. And ever since, La Moana has become the mother of water and hates men. I mean, this one is the only one that truly makes sense to me. At our number one spot, we have Mula Retinta. So this is a mule. Okay, now let's just make this mule dark and evil and we have Mula Retinta. This mule appears to people who happen to be transporting goods along Colombia's various paths. Once it's used to transport its good, it's said to cause a series of bad luck, which ranges from strong winds, storms, and sometimes it purposely takes the life of the other animals in the pack. These mules are reported in the Ardian region, which is a very mountainous region known for having very high and dangerous paths along the mountain. Regardless of whether or not you're transporting goods, just seeing this dark mule is a bad omen of death. And if you're trekking through this area, be prepared to stop as this spirit will not allow you to pass it until it accompanies you. Never thought a mule could be this bad, but I guess these scary urban legends teach me that anything is possible. Well, these are the top 10 scary Colombian mythical creatures. What do you guys think of all this list? I'm your host, Andrew, and I hope you guys have a scary day.